Hey everyone, I'm Nathan, this is Kyle. We're here at Dimensions 2024, and we're gonna break down the uh, X9 Core and Premium data sheet today. And we're gonna bust some myths and explain a little bit behind the scenes what it actually means. So Kyle, first question. What does the range actually mean for the X9 Core and Premium? So we've got uh, two options, right? So we've got 80 meters, we have 150 meters. On the Core, we've got 80 meters, which is more targeted for the people who are shooting indoors, right? The people who just want indoor data, they don't really care too much about going too far, but they still want to stay off lifts and ladders. Then we've got the 150 meters, which is more for outdoor use. So our geospatial customers, people are using perspective. People want to get uh, longer ranges like bridges, larger, taller buildings. So you get a lot of options there between the two. Gotcha, makes a lot of sense. Um, and when I see angular accuracy, so that's one I've never really understood. Can you break that down for me? With the new X9, we've got 16 arc seconds of accuracy. So it just improves the rotation of the instrument, allows for a higher accuracy as you go through and scan, and just brings you denser, nicer point clouds. Got you. Okay, and so what's the difference between that then and the range accuracy that I see is about two millimeters for the X9? What is, what's the kind of difference there? Yeah, so we have different ranges and different sort of accuracies as you go further away from the instrument. So as that laser spreads, we're gonna see different types of accuracy. And we introduce sort of error as we go further out, but two millimeter accuracy is what we see across the board for most of our point class. The other question here, we've got high sensitivity. Yeah. What, what does that mean? With this newer scanner, it's always high sensitivity. It's always up there. So you can get all those dark and reflective surfaces in the first scan without having to turn that mode off. Okay. How does it work in like the bigger ecosystem of solution? Like, tell me a little bit more, what's like a full kit when it comes to scanning? Totally. So yeah, we're not just capturing beautiful looking point clouds. A lot of the time we get people saying, I got a point cloud, and now what? So a lot of times we tell people, the next step is to process the data. So you've got it in field link or perspective, next is the process. Put it into RealWorks, clean it up, make it look nice, do some analysis, do some sort of uh, extra steps that you need for a deliverable. But you can also bring it into SketchUp, Scan Essentials. You can bring it into Revit. You can model directly off of that. You can really do a lot of next steps there. And we want to incorporate other data too, not just terrestrial laser scanners. Mobile mapping, drones, whatever you got, we can take it. Right. And then all of that flows up into the Trimble Reality Capture platform service, right? That's right. Okay. And then that enables you to share it with stakeholders. Like, what's the big deal about being able to share that via Trimble Connect. Absolutely, yeah, being able to share it via any HTML link, whether it's on your iPad, your phone, or just on your tablet or your computer, being able to visualize that data and be able to solve deliverables quickly and share with your team what you're looking at can answer questions a lot quicker. Okay, that's it. So it's not a subscription model, it's a usage model, but for topography. Yeah, exactly.